<clears throat> okay, I don't know if you can see me or not. I'm, a, I'm back from yesterday. My batteries went dead on my camera, so I ended up having to finish this fish without getting the rest of it videoed. But I'm going to proceed to tell you how to how to finish up this video. I came out here to sunlight so you can see this fish. Hopefully you'll, you'll be able to see it a little better out here in the sunlight. And I'm not no professional at this. I do it for myself and uh, some friends of mine and stuff. And I, and I just do what I can do. And I'm self-taught. So, uh, But this is what the fish ended up looking like. And I'm going to proceed to tell you how I finished it. Um, I had put the yellow on here. Now what you want to do with the yellow is just put a fine mist of yellow. You want it on the sides and on the orbicles. A little bit around the tail and the fins. And uh, you just want to use a fine mist. You can overdo the yellow. So just kind of mist it and then let it dry just a second or so and look and see if it's, you think it's enough. If it ain't, mist it again. Then you go with what they call a pea green. But keep in mind, you can overdo the yellow. Just kind of give it a light mist in the yellow and then another little light mist and go with that. Then you go with what they call a pea green. You go, you go around the eye really good and heavy. And then you come down the back down this way and you kind of fade it out. You kind of fade it at the lateral line. Kind of let it just fade through. But like again, like I say again, give it a fine mist in of, of, of pea green and then look at it. Let it dry a little bit. Give it another little fine coat of, if you think it needs it. Don't, don't get crazy with the pea green either. That's two colors you can get over, you can overdo. Then what you end up doing with, with that said and done, you come back and you use the iridescent colors. And one of them, the first one you use is a iridescent um, green. And um, now let me back up. You take a uh, like a detailed black, and you kind of shade the, you shade the around the eye and the top of the head again with a detailed black, and you touch up your spots if you need to. Um, I use a paintbrush on this one to touch up the spots. I make, uh, I make them, if I need to, I make them a little darker and then fade them out toward the bottom. Um, but you use a little detail black to get around the head here and fade it out, you know, toward the lateral line too. Don't, don't get crazy with it. Just kind of make him a shade of dark on the top part. And of course back here in the back too, you know, you want to, you want to darken this up some too back here. And of course I don't use an eye on this side. It's a fake eye. But this is, uh, and then once you get the black in there and you get it kind of a dark on top, because they run a dark on the top like this, and kind of fade it out toward the lateral line right in here. You don't want to get the dark way down on the bottom. You don't need it. And then um, I use a little bit of the black on the fins. The front of the fins get a little bit of black here. Just a light dusting is all you need. And on the fins, wherever you know that there was black at or seen that there was black, you put just a little dust in the black. Don't get crazy because you can way overdo the black. Um, some crappie have a black cast to them when they go through a spawning phase. They get a black looking smoky color to them. And sometimes you can hold your brush way back and do them like that. And you can get a little black dusty look to them, which turns out really good. Um, this, uh, like I say, once you get the black done, then you come in here with your iridescent. And you put that iridescent green on here. And that's what gives that crappie that shimmer, the shine that uh, when you pull him out of the water, he's got a purplish cast to him or a greenish sh um, cast to him that makes him really pretty. And that's what will do that. You put that on there, kind of stay on the top part, and then uh, around the tail right here and on the top of him, give him that shimmer and that shine. And just put a layer on, look at it, put another layer on if you need to until you get him where you want him. That's about how it works. Um, you can you can overdo it too. And then there's one other color that you put on there. It's called ultraviolet. Violet. And uh, you do not put very much of it. You put an ultraviolet spray on the top. It's a violet, uh, transparent violet is what it is. And it, it gives it, a, it, it helps it blend in. But what happens when you're doing these fish is, uh, if, if you're a beginner or don't know what you're doing, which I'm, like I say, I'm self-taught. And, and I'm getting to where I can do them fair. Uh, and, uh, you can overdo the paint. Don't get carried away because you can well, you can really put too much paint on. Put it's a layering process. Is what it is. You know, you start off with your white, uh, darken up your lines, and then you go to a, a black, and then you end up with a, a yellow, and then you end up with a pea green. You end up with an iridescent, and a little more of the black, 
uh, it's a layering process. Don't get carried away and just start putting paint on there because you're going to way overdo it. But anyhow, I just want to show you how to do it. Um, I put the eyeball in, and I, I put it in before I do the I paint the fish, and I put it in with Magic Sculpt, um, epoxy, um, uh, yeah, Magic Sculpt is what it is. Um, it's a two-part epoxy that you mix together. It's a putty, and you, I put the eye, I put it behind the eye, I put the eyeball in, and I do around the eye with it. Of course, you want to cover that up really good. Right here, as you can see on this fish, I put a uh, anal, I don't know what to call it, a vent where the fish bonds and stuff. I don't never leave mine just plain. I put a little bondo there or epoxy sculpt there, and I make him a little butt. And then in here, if I have a problem, or in here I have a problem, I use a little of that magic sculpt in here too, and just kind of put it in there and just take your finger and blend it in, you know. You don't want to leave any big notches or anything. Take your finger and, and smooth it out, blend it in. He's got about a three hour working time. You, and you can wet your finger and actually smooth that right down to where it's, it just blends in. But that's what I do with the eyes and stuff. On my fins, I use, uh, uh, they use a, a real thin paper. They sell it in McKenzie. It's thin backings, what I call it. Um, I put it on the, all the backs of my fins, which you can see that they're rubbery. That's what you want to do. That way, if you hit this thing or run this thing into something, it doesn't break them. What you do is you use a little of uh, that epoxy, um, you use a little bit of the Mod Podge, and you paint your fin, and this is before you paint it or anything, you paint your fin, then you stick a little bit of that piece of paper on the back of this. And then you take a cigarette lighter, let it dry for a second, and take your cigarette lighter and set it afar, and it'll, it'll, it'll burn it right to the shape of this fin. All these fins will be the same shape. And then uh, you just do each fin like that, and you put more Mod Podge on the, on the fins, and just give them a good coating, like say, you see how rubber they, rubbery they are. They're not going to break. They're real rubbery, which is a real good thing because sometimes these things get knocked off the walls. And don't get me wrong, after a while, this stuff gets tougher and harder, and it will break. But most of the time, it, it, it'll do pretty good. But the, the, like these fins here have probably got um, probably three layers of that Mod Podge on them. Mod Podge is cheap. You can get it about any craft store. And they sell some fin backing stuff and some... Uh, cream that you can buy. I've used it too and it works good too, but the Mod Podge is cheap and it works. Now it's one thing I'm doing with my fish, before I paint it, I'm painting him with that Mod Podge to kind of seal all them scales down and seal any voids and stuff. And it's kind of real thick Elmer's glue is what it looks like. And uh, it seems to be working pretty good for me. It lets the paint go on smoother and easier and it seems to be working really good. Uh, uh, this is one fish that I've done. Um, one one thing I didn't add is I put a little pink on the anal vent here. I put a little pink there, and I paint the inside the gills with red. I stick a rag in his mouth, and then I paint the gills with some fire red uh, to make them look good, you know, inside and out. I don't know if you can see it or not. And then I paint inside the mouth with a little bit of the pink flesh color. Um, the little spots here, the teeth, I paint the flesh a little bit with the pink. And like I say, that's... That's about it. I maybe sometimes I'll touch a little pink on the joints here in the front, but that's about all I do to them. And as you can see, it turned out fairly well. I mean, I've had better and I've had worse. And then after I get done with that, I just go to Walmart. What I've been using is a clear gloss. It's just the cheap stuff. It's a clear gloss. It's acrylic clear gloss. And I give him a, a quick spray of the of the clear gloss. You want to? You don't want to put it on real heavy at first. You just want to give him a shot. Just get it covered up with a shot of that clear gloss <coughs> excuse me and then let it dry, it dries in about 10 minutes let it dry pretty good, then come back and give him another layer and another layer, this has probably got three layers of that on it and it looks pretty good, I can put more on it if I want to but you don't want to get carried away because it will run when you put your first layer on there, make sure that you just give him a hot shot mist is what I call it, just, just mist him with it and let it dry real quick and then come back and put your layers on but that's all I do to them, as you can see. And of course, the back, of course, the back of it, I I ended up I used bondo on the seam and stuff. Just put a, a good layer of bondo on here. Then I just paint the back of it black because this side is not going to be seen. That's going to be on the wall like that. So that's how I do it. And if uh, if my spots don't come out the way I want them to on here uh, to suit me, I take my paintbrush and stuff. Even after I've cleared it, I will take my paintbrush. And I'll come back and I'll touch up these spots the way I want them. You can paint on that clear. Then what you want to do, if you if you have to do that, to make it pop out and look good, 
Then you come back and put you another layer of clear over top of the spots to seal it on there again. So it's not like once you seal it, it's a done deal. You can seal it, and if it don't suit you, a lot of times when you put that sealer on there, it'll pop that color out to you. Um, if, if it doesn't suit you at that point, like the markings, you can come back and touch up the markings and, uh, and then put another layer of sealer on it. It's not a said done deal, you know, but a lot of times when you're painting, you say, I don't look, it doesn't look that good. Now, when you put the clear on there, boom, it'll, it'll bring a lot of them colors out, and, and then you'll get to really see what it looks like. But this is one I've done. I want to show you some other ones I've done here. I've done this one, um, this one over here I'm going to get. I've done it uh, last year. And uh, I caught it in Kentucky Lake. This fish here I done last year, and uh, it was a really nice fish I caught down in Kentucky Lake. Now I was really happy with how it turned out. I put him on a stump like he's eating a minnow, which this thing can be turned at any time. You can turn him however you want to turn him. You know, he's just sitting on a stump. I've got a little stump here with a fake minnow on it. Of course, he's got a little dust on him right now. And I made a little fake log there. I don't know if you can see it. And a little fake stub. And then the minnow sets on that. It's got a piece of wire comes through and goes through his mouth. And like I say, you can turn him in. And this fish is mounted 3D. You can see this side of him. And you can see this side of him. So, I mean, it's got two sides to him. And uh, I was really pleased on how he turned out. It was a white crappie that I caught at Kentucky Lake. I think it was like 14 or 15 inches long. I can't remember. I was really pleased on the colors and how he turned out. And as you can see, pretty nice. It's a pretty nice mount. I was pretty tickled with it. And like I say, this one's mounted 3D. I split him up the belly, up through here, and all the way out to the tail. And I took him apart like that. And then uh, I had to put him back together that way, too. And as you can see, you don't see really any seam or anything. I'll turn him around here where you can see. There's not a lot of seam or anything. I used a little bit of the magic sculpt up in here, up in here, and back in here to cover up the seam. But you can't always get it perfect, but just get it as best you can. But that was my first 3D mount, and I thought it turned out pretty nice. I got one more I'm going to show you here. Now, this fish right here, I done the other day, and I just done this to be messing around. I'd been looking on YouTube and stuff, and looking at them doing castings of, of fish and stuff. And um, this fish right here is not real. This is a casted fish that I've made myself. I made a mold of a real fish, and then I made the, the fins and everything. I made all the fins and put them inside here, put them inside here, and then the tail fin. There's none of these fins that are real. Now, as I was telling you about the yellow, you can see on this fish that I got just a little bit too much yellow on there. And that's what I was talking about. You can overdo the yellow. He'd been better if he'd have been more white. But uh, it was my first reproduction. I just done it for myself to see if I could do it. I think it turned out pretty good. Um, that's about all. The, all I got to say. I mean, the markings I've done with a with a magic uh, with a paintbrush and a little bit of paint. I blended it down with water, like I was saying earlier. And I touched these markings up. Of course, this is a black crappie, and uh, I was really pleased with how it turned out. This is a real eye, of course, you know, one you can buy. I, 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 I uh, rotored that out with a Dremel tool, and I put the real eyeball and used epoxy sculpt on it. And I was pretty pleased with it. And a lot of people look at it and say, man, that's a nice crappie there. Yeah, but it's not real. Um, these fins I made out of a milk jug. That's milk jug material. I took a milk jug, cut the fins out. Of course, I hand painted them with a brush. You know, they're not perfect, but they they suit me. And uh, I just wanted to make a video on how to do this. And I hope everybody can enjoy it and get some use out of it. Um, I've got a phone number if you need some. You need to call somebody and tell some, ask somebody a question or something. I don't know everything there is to be known, but I can tell you what I know, or I can maybe can direct you in in what I do. Um, my phone number is 859-553-6883. And uh, if I can help you, I will. I ain't gonna, like I say, I don't know everything. And, but I'll, I'll tell you what I know. And um, I just use the Pache airbrush. It's gravity fed. And uh, I use wildlife colors is what I've been using. Um, I don't know if there's better or worse. I'm sure there is. But that's what I've been using. All right. I just want to show you a few things. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.
How was that? How was that? Be my luck it ain't recording.